Mount Sinai. Dr. Petrie, great to have you with us on the show today. Now, you participated in the AstraZeneca vaccine trial, so let's begin there. Uh, what are some of the major differences between the AstraZeneca vaccine versus the one from Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna? Yes, Nora, definitely there are uh, differences between the two. The main one is the way they work. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is based on the harmless chimpanzee cold virus that had the spike proteins from uh, COVID inserted, and that's how it's been administered. It's somehow different than traditional vaccines that, that used to have inactivated virus. This is using a harmless virus with the antigen spike on it. Now, when, when we are looking at Pfizer and Moderna, they are called messenger RNA vaccines. Actually, they are kind of genetic recipes that are inserted into the body. And once inside the cell, they dictate the cell, make the spike protein and fake you had an infection and basically the body is respond responding with the immune uh, mm -hmm. reaction. Dr. This is the main difference. The second mm -hmm. is the cost. We are looking at Oxford vaccine to be a quarter of the cost from uh, um, Pfizer and Moderna. The transportation, it's much easier. It can be stored and transport at regular fridge temperature. If you look at the other two, Pfizer requires ultra cold freezers that are difficult to be achieved in most the medical practices or remote rural areas. Dr. Petrie, the average American is having to consider a lot of factors that they've probably never even thought about before. You mentioned the mRNA mechanism, for example, the difference in efficacy between these vaccines, and then sometimes a lack of disclosure on late stage trials or having to halt trials, which we know was an issue for AstraZeneca. What do you think are the biggest factors at this point that is influencing sentiment generally around the vaccine and confidence in the different vaccines? Well, on a positive side, compared with two months ago, we are seeing um, increased confidence level. By latest poll in the United States, we're approaching 70 percent. And from the rest, 30 percent, 10 percent already had the virus. So they are hesitant to receive uh, the vaccine for those reasons. So it's good that we're seeing confidence level going up. I think the major determinants on such a critical level confidence when we started around 50 percent in September was the, the fast pace of these vaccine developments, um, a, a lot of mistrust on seeing the speed of development and the trials be happening so fast. Also, keep in mind, social media is a huge magnet for misinformation. And it's great that recently uh, social media like Facebook decided to hit hard on that misinformation. That'll be very helpful. So I think we're heading in the right direction, considering that we need more than 70 percent of people vaccinated and we are approaching those numbers. Doctor, would love to get your take on the new UK process that they've announced where they're prioritizing the first dosage to be widespread versus prioritizing getting both doses in a smaller amount of time. Do you think this is going to be effective? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, this is based on science. It's not like someone came up with random numbers. So when they looked at the pool analysis back, they realized after first dose, people could have immunity up to 70%. But it's just, to, uh, when we talk about 70%, we talk about preventing severe disease. But in keep in mind that none of this uh, patient involved in a trial who received the vaccine actually died. So it's fair to say that actually prevents 100% death. So that's considered a very good endpoint if you look from that angle. Now, it also it shows that having 70% after the first dose and achieving average 80% after second dose in three months could be a way to maximize benefits and have more people vaccinated to achieve a mass vaccination faster and more effective while uh, uh, giving some protection to more people. Doctor, quickly, since this is based in science and data, do you expect the U.S. to take a similar approach? Well, uh, ideally, it would be great if that could be implemented here as well. But keep in mind that the U.S., it's much more rigorous and has more uh, rigid protocols when it comes to approval. So I think the big decision will be made in January when the FDA is supposed to evaluate the data from um, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. We have 30,000 
participants in the United States. The preliminary data was based only on 10,000 participants from UK and Brazil. So I think the answers will be uh, definitely uh, answered at that time. We'll have more data, more information, and uh, more scientific data to determine which way we go. Doctor, thank you so much for your expertise and for your time and, of course, for the work that you're doing. That's Dr. Louisa Petrie, cardiologist and assistant professor at Mount Sinai. Thanks again. Coming up on